He was not only a personal lawyer. He was a confidant. He was always there. He was an aide. And on the day he died, he was right there by his bedside. And Dr. Diambo Lel, whom you guys saw in the documentary, said in Luo, when Jaramogi breathed this last, Jim, which means, Jim, Mze has slipped through my hands. Your reflections, Governor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the Prime Minister, uh, Raila Molo Odinga, and the Odinga family, uh, Mama Susan, and uh, the family. Uh, if I was to talk about Jaramogi, I would take a long time. But let me say, on this day, at this hour, I was at uh, the Agakan Hospital. I had come on a mission where Jarambogi had instructed me to write a letter to Nelson Mandela, which he wanted to be delivered. And he wanted a meeting between him and Nelson Mandela before Mandela became the president of South Africa. Jaramogi left us in January uh, 1994, and Mandela became president in May 1994. So it is a day I never really want sometimes to think about, because I think history today would have been different. But I'm grateful to Olaro Tunu because the things that you said about Jaramogi, I would not want to repeat them, but because Jaramogi left us with a legacy of struggle. And I think those virtues of Jaramogi are important for us today. The virtue of wisdom, the virtue of justice, and the virtue of courage. And more importantly, when we're talking about courage, is not sh sheer bravery. It's more than that. And for Jaramogi, it also meant the co commitment to the th truth. So, I would feel happy if I could uh, say in a few words, what Jaramogi desired of us, those that he left behind. And I just want to read from his own book. And by the way, if you read Not Yet Uhuru, I want you to read the introduction by Jaramogi, read the preface by Kwame Nkrumah, and what I call a preamble and a dedication. Those, these three parts of Jaramogi's book are very important, thinking about the struggle today. And this is what Jaramogi said in this seminal book about the time. And I quote, when the political temperature, I may paraphrase in order to shorten, when the political temperature was highest, the youth and the women were the greatest single force of our struggle and its nerve center. The women created the political consciousness, and I'm grateful for what Jan Bogo is saying. The women created the political consciousness which sent the, the people to the polls. And it is they who voted to sweep our first independence government to power. The youth and women galvanized the people on whose support we rode to victory. They were never afraid of bullets, tear gas, or jail. And then in his dedication in this book, what does he say? And I quote, I dedicate this book, the story of my life and political struggle to the youth of Kenya, my country.
as the spirit of the youth carried us through our hardest days in the fight for independence so on the youth the ship the youth will ship our new country Kenya so looking at the struggle from 1994 without the youth i think we would not have been where we were we are today without the women i don't think we were we would be where we are today and i want to repeat that it is true that when there were meetings about the leadership of ford jaramogi's preferred candidate was wangari madai and you remember to the end in the elections that came wangari madai still advocated for jaramogi to become the second the third president president of the republic of kenya now when you talk about courage i have never seen somebody of that age so courageous i remember an incident that when we went to garissa for a political meeting and we carried all the political heavyweights to garissa including martin shikuku uh, kimani wanyoike denis akumu uh, buya buya and at the airport in garissa the military said we could not go through to go and hold a, a political meeting in garissa and when one of the people in garissa offered a, a combi which found its way into the military into the airport some of us so much shall not mention refused to enter that pickup but martin shikuku was always very loud sat at the back of the <laughs> of the combi and jeromogi of all the people who sat on the front and the order the driver to drive through the mill, the gate and the barrier that the military had put there and we managed to pass through and get to garissa town and held a meeting and i remember abuya crying that oh i've been hit by a stone the dam we na talk of mkono yangu and jaramogi said unataka unataka itoke maji uh and uh, we ended up having a very successful meeting on on that day the second thing if you read the book between what um nokroma says and what jaramogi says is that on issues of principles we should be steadfast we should stay fast and he cries in that book that the independence government was taken over by people who did not believe in the struggle and today in kenya and i'm sorry uh, my friend korea is here and you are my very good friend if you look part if you look at kenya today part of the problem that we have today is that those who are in power were never part of the struggle and in this we face a lot of challenges and we must rededicate the struggle uh in Kenya to make sure that the progressive movement attains what Jaramogi desired of us and is never too late and i thank raila molodinga being steadfast in keeping this flame of freedom burning all the time and i know it can it can be done the other thing that i remember about jaramogi and this is the last point i think we are tired and late there's a time when uh, through jobo mino he had uh, organized for a meeting in london between him and uh, tiny roland to ask for funds for the campaign 
And uh, Tani Roland used to run a hotel in London uh, with Mohammed Gaddafi. As soon as we got to that hotel, Jaramogi, instead of just asking for a contribution, he went straight and told Tiny Roland that you people have exploited Africa and you have nothing to show. And the worst is that uh, Mozambique, Rhodesia, uh, what is Zimbabwe now, and Zambia could have become independent countries if Londro East Africa had not engaged with the reactionary forces, particularly in Mozambique. Now, when uh, Tani Roland walked out uh, and I was trying to whisper to him, Jaduong, Koroki wacha mwata angwa yudu pasa inenadi. So, when Tani Roland came back, he told him, I know you are Moi's friend. I will not stop you from giving him a contribution. But you must also give us a contribution uh, because you know we, we are the ones who stand for the truth. And a testimony to that, when Jaramogi died, Tani Roland was here you know, to say bye-bye to Jaramogi Ogingo Dinga. So this is a life that is very difficult to re replicate, but I think the legacy lives, and Kenya is in the right direct, uh, trajectory if we follow the footsteps of Jaramogi Ogingo Odinga. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Thank you very much, Governor Orengo. I'll ask now the panelists, with the exception of Archbishop Okoth, to remain, and the rest can say.